Thanks everyone for coming out. My name is Joe Mack. I'm with B Real BKF, which is Real Bare Knuckle Fighting. Uh, we're having a press conference today to announce the cancellation of a bare, bare Knuckle Fighting super fight that was supposed to take place tomorrow night, Friday, November 17, 2017. The purpose of this press conference, and the main purpose is to clarify the chain of events that have led to the proposed super fight being canceled between Bobby Gunn and Shannon Rich. We also want to put an end to the rumors, conspiracy theories, innuendo, and speculation that are being spread over the internet and social media. Third, we are going to set the record straight. Once and for all, who is responsible for this fight not taking place tomorrow night? And then we'll answer, answer questions from the press and attendees here at the end of the fight. Now, let's go through a chronological timeline. Um, let's get the facts right. As reported by Staten Bonner, in Rolling Stone magazine on May 16th, 2016, Tyson Fury announced a $100,000 prize to any man who could beat Bobby Gunn in a winner-take-all bare-knuckle fight. Now, when that article hit the internet, Shannon Rich, the world's most active MMA fighter, he immediately offered to match that $100,000 with a side bet on a fight against Bobby Gunn effectively issuing a challenge and taking up the offer. Bobby Gunn and Shannon Rich agreed to fight, and it was announced by Bobby Gunn and his promoter, Dave Feldman, that the fight was set for June 11th, 2016, and they said it would take place at the Miccosukee Reservation in Miami. Bobby Gunn pulled the plug on the fight on June 6th, for the fight that was to take place June 11th, because unfortunately, the passing of Muhammad Ali on June 3rd, 2016, and then suddenly and unexpectedly, the passing of Kimbo Slice three days later on June 6th, Bobby decided in their honor he wouldn't fight. Now, speaking from Shannon's viewpoint and my viewpoint, if I was going to do, if I were to do something to honor fighters, I certainly wouldn't have pulled out of the fight. I would have fought. But that's just my opinion. That's Shannon's uh -huh. opinion. But Bobby Gunn thought it fit to postpone the fight. So the Gunrich fight was then scheduled for a date to be announced in July. I have all the documentation here at press conferences, in emails, in text messages. Uh, we have documentation. This isn't just conversation. We can back up everything we say. So it was scheduled to be announced for a date sometime in July. July came and went, and the fight did not happen. The purported Miccosukee Reservation in Miami, Florida, that was declared to be the site of this super fight, was never mentioned again by Bobby Gunn was promoted. This now $200,000 winner-take-all super fight was rescheduled once again and announced by Bobby Gunn promoter David Feldman in a press release that the fight was going to take place at the Paradise Live at the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Hollywood, Florida on September 9, 2016. However, calls to the Seminole Tribe by Mr. Rich confirmed that there was never a fight set to take place at that casino. The remainder of 2016, Bobby Gunn began lobbying his promoter for a fight with the legendary fighter Roy Jones Jr. And that glove match did take place February 17, 2017. I was one of the ringside reporters. I was also the post-fight interviewer. And uh, Gunn lost a lopsided eight-round TKO of a scheduled 12-round cruiserweight fight. Now, Mr. Gunn decided to continue on with his glove boxing career instead of pursuing this looming huge $200,000 payday since he could beat any man. And he had a man willing to fight him in a straight-up bare-knuckle fist fight. But he decided to fight on April 15, 2017, almost two months to the day of getting battered and bloodied by Roy Jones. He recycled an old foe of his, a guy by the name of Mr. James Morrow. Now, Mr. Morrow, a professional fighter, at this time when he fought Bobby Gunn for the second time, he fought him in 2008. When he fought him on March 15, 2017, he scored a record of 12 wins, 21 losses and 3 draws. Have no idea what could be gained from fighting a guy like this. Now while the specter of this huge winner take all fight still was looming against Shannon Rich, Bobby Gunn again continued his glove boxing career on July 22, 2017. Bobby Gunn faced one Mr. Gilberto Dominguez of Brazil who had lost 7 of his last 5 fights including a 5 fight losing streak. But that somehow qualified Mr. Dominguez to face Bobby Gunn for something called the CPBC, the
the Canadian Professional Boxing Council International Heavyweight Championship. I know because I was Bobby Gunn's chief cornerman and I was his cut man for that fight. Now finally, the Police Gazette posted a tweet on October 20th, 2017, just last month. And in that tweet, they wondered what happened to the fight. And Shannon Rich issued a challenge to Bobby Gunn. Bobby Gunn accepted, and the date was set for November 17, 2017. Now, I've known Bobby Gunn for many, many years. We have done many business deals with him. I have on my phone his authorization and his permission and his begging me to help him with this fight because his promoter wasn't getting it done. So I stepped in at his request, and we were given very short notice to get this fight put together. So on October 23rd, 2017, Bobby Gunn reached out to me because he was frustrated with David Feldman, his inability to get the fight, and the fight was only a few weeks, few weeks away now. So I agreed to do what I had done in the past for Bobby, and that was to make things happen. Now, it was during this time that Bobby placed a conference call to Shannon Rich and to me in relation to Scott Burst and Scott Burst of the Barrel Boxing Hall of Fame because there was an issue that had occurred. At that time, Bobby Gunn informed Shannon that I was now the point man that I was the go-to guy to make this fight happen. Mr. Mr. Shell, yep. Mr. Rich will back me up on that. Absolutely. Bobby Gunn then sent a detailed text to me, giving me absolute authority to negotiate for him based on our long-term professional and personal relationship. Shannon gave me Mr. Tommy Ranger's phone number. Mr. Ranger has connections with Native American casinos. And on October 27, 2017, and keep in mind, all this is trying to make the fight happen for Bobby. There's nothing here that was underhanded. There's nothing here but trying to make the fight a reality. And Bobby is blowing my phone up and calling me and texting me, what do we got? Can we make it happen? So on October 27th, Mr. Ranger and I had a one-hour conversation of strategy because now we're looking at October 27th. We're talking about this fight happening in 22 days, in less than in about three weeks. So thanks to Tommy Ranger, thanks to the legendary... MMA pioneer Dan Severin, a pay-per-view company was brought to the table. Native American tribes were interested in negotiating with Mr. Ranger because Shannon Rich is quarter shot tall Native American. And the fight needed to be pushed back because we're, we're talking about making something that takes three or four months happen in, in a matter of two or three weeks. So I asked Bob directly, can we get the fight set for the 8th of December or the 15th of December? Bobby Gunn insisted that that was not possible. He insisted because he said Rolling Stone would not allow it and that November 17th was a, a firm date, there's no negotiating. We still worked with that and we still made it happen through countless hours, endless resources from Mr. Ranger on my part, on Mr. Severn's part, on Mr. Rich's part, and the people behind the scenes at the pay per view company, all these negotiations, we got the deal put together. It was an immense amount of time, an immense amount of, uh, of uh, resources, but we had the major pay-per-view company. Now, this pay-per-view company is the same live streaming company that did the live streaming for Conor McGregor and Floyd Mayweather. Now, who wouldn't want to work with those guys? If you're in prize fighting to make money, to win a prize, this is the grand prize. This is a golden ticket that we were delivering to this man. So on Monday, November 6, 2017, pay-per-view agreements were drawn up, sent to all parties involved. They were signed off by the pay-per-view company. They were signed off by Mr. Rich. They were signed off by another organization, Global Green Consulting LLC, which was behind the scenes helping us fund this and put this deal together. And everybody signed off on this agreement, except for Bobby Gunn. Bobby Gunn informed me that you've got to understand I've known this guy for years and years and years. He stated that his agent, Mr. Shane Salerno, had to approve this deal. First I've ever heard of it. I guess all those fights he's got on YouTube where he's fighting guys in, in uh, garages and tire warehouses, I guess Shane Salerno approved those fights as well because those were illegal fights. So he had me send Shane Salerno an email telling him that we were in time crunch and we needed approval on this. Shane Salerno sent me back a very curt response several hours later making demands. We met those demands. The, the contract was revised. We sent that contract out. Mr. Salerno again made further demands 
And those demands were so unreasonable and they were so unfair that no reasonable business person would be able to repeat those. Bobby Dunn essentially was trying to price himself out of the fight so he wouldn't have to face Mr. Rich. That's the fact of the matter. It's kind of like his challenges he used to put on a YouTube. Son, bring your $50,000 over here. It's not a problem for me. I'll fight your son for $50,000. Bring your $50,000. Well, he knows these guys that he's challenging don't have $500. So how are they going to bring $50,000 to come face you, Mr. Dunn? This is a truth campaign, not a smear campaign. Everything that's being talked about today is the truth. Now, let's get back to when the contract was in negotiations. I arranged a conference call between myself, Bobby Dunn, the head of the pay-per-view company, and his vice president. The four of us were on the phone, and we were discussing the terms of the contract, and quite frankly, they were concerned that the fight was even going to happen, because this fight has been scheduled and rescheduled, scheduled, canceled, postponed, for whatever reason, and so here we are now, this company's fixing to put up tens of thousands of dollars for the production, and they're wondering if Bobby's even going to show up. Well, it's obvious now that he never had any intentions of coming to Phoenix, Arizona to fight. It's obvious now that his whole intention was to fight in a warehouse in Hell's Kitchen, New York, like he expressed to me, like he expressed to Mr. Rich, and that's what he was wanting to take place. Something that he wanted to take and put on his cell phone and put it on Facebook Live instead of having a golden ticket with a company that had just put on McGregor Mayweather. I don't, it just doesn't make any sense. If it doesn't make any sense, it's just, if it doesn't make dollars, it doesn't make sense. So, on this phone call, Bobby Gunn started off his usual polite self. Oh, yes, it's very good to talk to you, sir. Oh, sir, you're very, you're very kind to be able to help us out. Within about five minutes, he went very erratic. He lost his total composure, said we were trying to strong arm him and bully him into signing a contract when that was not what was taking place. He started talking over everyone, and then he abruptly hung up the phone, of which he now denies doing. But there's an answer for that, too, because there was a witness that nobody knew was on the line that can verify all that. Not that we need them, but at any rate, the conditions of the pay-per-view contract, the contract was issued. We met the conditions. Now more conditions were put upon us where he didn't. Mr. Salerno said that Bobby Gunn should not have to share in the cost of production. He should not have to. He wanted a higher share than everybody else, and we had this thing divided up equally. So... The, the breakdown on the fight, he refused to sign the contract. We put the contract together. We had the pay-per-view. The pay-per-view, for the pay-per-view to work, we've got to have the Native American casino. If we don't have the pay-per-view, nobody wants to be involved because there's no reason to put this fight on in front of 500 people or like Bobby's used to fighting you know, in front of a, a few people in a warehouse. So instead of Mr. Salerno approving Bobby Gunn to fight in a legal sanctioned Bare knuckle boxing, real BKF super fight against Shannon Rich with the potential to sell hundreds of thousands of pay per view subscribers. Bobby Gunn proposed that Shannon Rich come to New York, come to Hell's Kitchen, fight him for no money. I wonder where that $100,000 from Tyson Fury went. Fight him with no title, no contract, and no pay per view except for what Bobby was going to do on a cell phone. This just simply does not make good business sense, and no reasonable business person would agree to that. So that's the timeline of events that have brought us here today, folks. Unfortunately, that fight's not going to happen. Now, what I want to do now is I want to give Shannon Rich a, a time to speak, because we're going to talk about the rumors, fabrications, and speculation that's going on on the Internet, and then we're going to set the record straight, and then we're going to take questions from all of you guys. So what I'd like to do right now is I'd like to invite Shannon Rich up here to the podium to give his take on the situation, ladies and gentlemen, so Mr. Shannon Rich, the most... Active fighter, fighter in the world. Look, I'm going to get I'm going to get short and sweet. Bobby's supposed to be the best BKB bare knuckle boxing champion. Some made up 72 and 0 record. I don't care if his record is 100. He's never fought a real fighter. I'm a real fighter. I stepped up. I accepted his challenge. And, uh, you know, I want to fight the guy. I still want to fight him. I, I think I can beat him. I, well, I know I can beat him. So, uh, more or less, he just backed out. He's a pussy. He doesn't want to fight me. And that's the story. Also, at this time, very instrumental in helping us get this done is a man that Bobby Gunn has spent a lot of time trying to keep me from talking to. And this man is Mr. Tommy Ranger. He is on our team. 
he is a very instrumental and, and important cog in the wheel. So I want to bring Mr. Ranger up here to say a few words about the situation. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Tommy Ranger. First of all, I want to thank you all for coming and everybody that's going to be listening to this, the, the truth campaign, basically. And I want to thank Joe for doing a great job bringing the truth and just letting all the fans out there know what's really going on. And he has all the documentation, basically, to back up everything that he states. Um, I was not involved uh, with Mr. Gunn uh, prior to Mr. Gunn contacting me and by via Shannon Rich. So Mr. Gunn solicited me, got my phone number, called me, asked me uh, if I could help participate, bring in a pay-per-view company, if I could possibly um, bring more MMA fans or bare knuckle boxing fans uh, or even money to the table to help him with the purse and productions and everything else. I stated that I could. Uh, Mr. Gunn said that, thank you, you're, you, you're very well known in the industry and we, everybody gives you high regards. We give you high regards. Thank you for taking my call. And uh, I know you're a busy man and uh, that uh, you would love to be working with us and whatever we can do. Uh, Native Americans, casinos, the fight will take place. He told me that as a book deal told me he has a movie deal. He said that the fight will take place on that day. It cannot be changed. So with that in hand, um, I listened to him, told him that we would uh, join in and try to help him and Shannon to make this uh, 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 fight event take place. Uh, after hanging up with uh, Mr. Gunn, being so kind and polite, uh, a few days later I talked to Shannon Rich and uh, Basically, he kind of put a smear campaign on me because I wouldn't give him any money. Um, then, uh, of course, uh, that Mr. Severn, the greatest MMA fighter was with more wins than anybody in the world. Uh, a triple crown, uh, three championship UFC belt holder um, was coming to make this fight to, so the fans could see it real, real eyes, real live. Real MMA style, UFC style, Bellator style, the truth. Not in a warehouse, not on a cell phone, but put championship belt. John L. Sullivan belt that's been waiting to come out. Uh, I also talked with Scott Burt, the holder of the belt, the Police Gazette, talking with everybody. It's all real. Uh, even talked with Staten Bonner from Rolling Stones magazines prior back when it was going to be in Florida and it was canceled due to uncontrolled circumstances, as Bobby Gunn always stated. Um, I got the pay-per-view companies involved. Uh, we're working with the Native American communities. Um, everybody was, it was a go, go, go. Everybody signed the contract except for Bobby Gunn. And every time they made a change, he wouldn't sign it. And he was the one asking for the changes. So I have nothing else to say except for I know that this man, this true professional that has over 21 belts, I believe. How many belts do you have, Shannon? 29. 29 belts. I believe seven on? Eight world titles. Eight world titles. Okay. He's a true champion, a true professional. And two, two, three weeks before the fight's going to take place, he's doing another tournament over in California, and that was a jiu-jitsu jiu -jitsu Brazilian world title. And Shannon, what did you do? Two, two, two gold medals, gi and no gi. Two gold medals, gi and no gi. World championship titles before he's going to fight the coward Bobby Gunn. That's the only thing that I can say. <laughs> if there's any questions. Well, we're actually going to continue on with the uh, press conference. And we're going we're to address a few issues that we got. But thank you, Tom. Thank you. Um, now, you know, the, the reason we're having this this press conference, as I stated, we want the truth to come out. There are lies, rumors, innuendo, speculation, falsehoods, everything you can imagine circulating on the internet. And people believe the internet. Like if you see it on TV or read it in the newspaper, by golly, it must be true. Well, we have the documentation to prove everything. We have the witnesses, credible witnesses. And when you speak of credible fighters and credible people in the world of combat sports, they don't come any more credible than Mr. Dan Severin. I would like to have Mr. Dan Severn come up here, speak for a few minutes on what he was bringing to the table. 
uh, what his participation was going to be. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, the uncomparable Dan Seven. I, I look at myself as just kind of a small part of this entire uh, promotion here right now. The, the aspect was you have this uh, match, this pinnacle uh, fight that's going to be taking place because between the Shannon Rich and, and Bobby Gunn. Uh, it's something that's been in uh, the makings for quite some time, and uh, then they have it not material on Younger. And, but uh, it also came as a part of the, what I call the Macho's Pipeline that came from Macho's Michigan through Mesa, Arizona, my home. And then uh, they've gone on to do great things on their own, uh, on their own accords. Yes. Fantastic. Again, just be just be part of all this with all the, these distinguished gentlemen that are here and, and others that are out here in the audience. And, you know, it's an honor, pleasure to help <coughs> set the truth below. I'm not exactly what they call a very politically correct individual. I'm be able to blunt and curt to the point, but I can live with my conscience and, and be about something where we're going to set the record straight. Oh. I'm glad to be a part of it. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, let's get to the rumors, fabrications, and speculation. Um, <clears throat> Monday night, I'm sitting at my house, my wife and I, we live out in the country. And it was late in the night, and there was a knock on my front door. And I told my wife, I said, well, that's either the police or bad news. And so I went to the door. Front porch lights burned out. We have a mahogany front door and a little small glass, stained glass with it. And I couldn't really tell. I knew it was a guy as big as Tommy Ranger standing there and somebody else standing behind him. So I said, Who is it? They said, The police, the sheriff's department. I said, Identify yourself. They shined their light and they were geared up. So I opened the door. They said, uh, We're looking for Joe McEwen. I said, You found him. He said, We need to talk to you. I said, Come on in, gentlemen. They came in. I said, Let me take one guess. Bobby Gunn. They said, yes, sir, that's exactly right. I said, what's the problem? Well, he says that you've been calling him, harassing him, threatening him, and attempting to extort money from him. This is outrageous and a flat-out, bold-faced lie. I haven't spoken or communicated with Bobby Gunn since he sent me a text and said, I'm sorry you feel this way. I love you, Joe. Now, my phone is full of communication with Bobby Gunn where he sings my praises says nothing but positive things about me. As a matter of fact, when the press release was announced, his son, 21-year-old son, a boy, got on Twitter and wanted to start calling me all kind of disparaging names and making uh, disparaging comments about my character. Bobby came to my defense on Twitter. Now, I wasn't responding. I went silent. Because sometimes silence can be very powerful. So I didn't respond. Bobby defended me. And I'm so happy that I screenshotted those responses because he went back and deleted them. Now, the reason I bring this up is because the police, at my behest, conducted an investigation. They didn't need a search warrant. They didn't need to have anybody but these two fine law enforcement professionals and deputies. One of them was a corporal. The other was a deputy. Um, I posted the card online to let people know what happened in my home. They checked my phone. They checked my text. They checked my phone history. I said, I can pull up my phone log from my phone company, AT&T, if you want me to. They looked at my computer. And they were very upset because they had obviously been called from New Jersey by Mr. Gunn and told lies on me. Now, I work with the police department. My father is a retired lieutenant detective from the National Police Department. I sponsor the Theodore Roosevelt Association Police Award through my home improvement company every single year. Um, I am very proud to be affiliated with law enforcement. I'm not afraid of law enforcement. I'm not afraid of the truth. You only have to be afraid of the truth is when you've done something wrong. We've done absolutely nothing wrong here. When you have the truth on your side, justice and vindication are very easy to accomplish. Trying to threaten people, making up false accusations is a crime when you call from one state to another and send the police to someone's house. So they let it be known to me that if I don't do something, they're not going to be happy with me. So we're going to be looking into that when I get back into national. Uh, Bobby Gunn has even made thinly veiled disguises, not only on the phone to Shannon in screaming matches, but also through text and also uh, via your uh, Twitter account. Uh, Bobby Gunn's made multiple calls to this hotel, so many so that they don't even want to be named in this press conference, but he caught her so much that they were on the brink of feeling like they were being harassed as well. 
and they and quite technically they were. Uh, now there's this latest conspiracy theory. Now, I want you all to understand this is what he's come up with. He now is accusing Shannon Rich and myself of being in collusion with a bare knuckle boxing company in the UK and this collusion of sorts that he is imagining it supposedly happened this past summer, and all of this was set up to be able to put him on lockdown for two years under the contract with us. We don't want him on lockdown. This was a one-off fight. We wanted Bobby Gunn to fight one time. Bobby Gunn did not fight. He didn't sign the contract. But this conspiracy theory, if you want some entertainment, go on his Twitter site. It doesn't just sound like the ramblings of someone who is desperate. It sounds like to someone who's delusional and paranoid. So that's the rumors, fabrication, speculation. It's all it is. They're all a pack of lies. Now, for the record, Shannon Rich, Tommy Ranger, Dan Severn, Joe Mack, the pay-per-view company, we had this super fight locked and loaded and ready. Bobby Gunn sabotaged it by backing out of his not only verbal agreement, but refusing to sign the contract, and he missed out on a golden ticket for a pay-per-view event that really had to potential to bring in hundreds of thousands, if not maybe millions, of viewers worldwide. This company we're working with has a database of over 2.2 billion contacts. This is people that have bought pay-per-view for MMA, boxing, wrestling, anything to do with combat sports. Why a businessman and prize fighter would not want to latch themselves onto that in the twilight of their career is beyond me. It just does not make sense. So moving forward, you heard Mr. Severn, I prompted him on uh, KB American MMA. You know, this fight was just one event, but it was one event that kicked up, kickstarted something that's very, really much bigger. KB American MMA wants to present American style fighting all over the world. And this is Dan Severn and Tommy Rangers. Uh, this is their venture. And they were going to bring real BKF, Canaris, Bobby Gunn, everybody on board to, to make this a part of a bigger picture and do this on a national level. Yeah. And this was the opportunity that Bobby Gunn's been begging me for. We made it happen. It was a miracle we got it done. We presented it to him, and he wouldn't follow through. So let's be very clear on why this fight did not happen. This fight did not happen because Bobby Gunn backed out. That's the end of the conversation when it comes to why the fight did not happen. And what I'd like to do now is I'd like to turn it over to those of you who are here in attendance uh, for some questions and answers. And I'm going to sit down and we'll uh, answer any questions that you might have. Um, I have a question for Mr. Shannon Rich, the canon. So, you are recognized as the world's most active MMA fighter. We know this, we've seen it, we've heard it. You said you have eight championship titles and 29 belts. How many fights have you had? And where have you had these fights? I've had 26, uh, 126 professional MMA fights all over the world, from, from Burma to Japan, China, Romania, Mexico, Canada, you name it, I've probably been there. Been fighting since 1991. So during that 26 year career, put in my time. Yeah. Okay. A question for you, Joe. Okay. Uh, it's well documented that you've been involved in uh, with Bobby Gunn's career and grown up all uh, fighting for years. Uh, why do you think he didn't sign a contract with Shannon? Well, uh, quite honestly, knowing Bobby the way I know him and now knowing information that I have, uh, seeing, hearing from with my own ears the way he talks about me behind my back to other people when I was on a phone call and he didn't know it, um, I know the whole, the whole reason why. See, when a fighter is really, truly prepared to fight, and they've done everything they need to fight, and they're confident that they're going to win this fight, they will go into any fight. And like Bobby Gunn always says, I'll fight any man born of a mother. I'm not afraid of a man who walks with two legs. Shut up. He didn't fight because he didn't want this to be on worldwide pay-per-view. He wanted to do it with his cell phone so he could edit it down so when he got a beat down at the hands of Shannon Rich, then he could edit the fight and make it look the way he wanted it to look and make it perceive the way he wanted it to perceive. He didn't sign to fight this fight because he knew that the whole world would see him for what he was once he faced a real fighter. Not some taxi driver off the street they paid a thousand dollars to let Bobby beat up. Not some some bum that's never had the experience. So why did Bobby Gunn not sign the contract? Because he's scared to fight Shannon Rich. And if he wasn't scared, he'd be here right now. He's done everything in his power to stop this press conference, and we're still moving on with it. 
question for Shannon uh, When did you last fight, uh, last compete in, in MMA or BJJ event in Los Angeles? Two weeks ago, I fought in uh, Long Beach, California, in a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu company called Worlds. So it's the World Championship for Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and uh, won two gold medals. Um, actually, I have a question for uh, Dan Seven. Um, so you also obviously are an MMA pioneer. You're a legend. You're very well known. Very well respected. We sort of heard your involvement so far with making this event happen. Um, so now that it's crumbled and fallen apart, what are your plans? What are you going to do next? I was just say that only one event has crumbled and fell apart. Uh, obviously, we're going to move ahead. Uh, through through these trials and tribulations, I'll just say that at least we've met some really good people along the way, and uh, rest assured that we will continue to, to move forward just without the likes of someone like Bobby Gunn being involved. So we're hoping that uh, that maybe there will be a better uh, event that will still take place, and that Shannon will get the, the rights to uh, to actually compete for this championship belt, the John L. Sullivan belt. Uh, those are all still in, in the negotiations, but uh, just because we have one stomach block doesn't mean that that's going to make us out whatsoever. But we're going to continue on and do a lot of things involving the combat arts, both MMA-wise, bare knuckle-wise, and maybe a few rather unique commodities thrown in the, over the top. Yeah, I think we'd all really like to see a bare knuckle Motion going on out here. And, you know, as far as we're concerned, I think Shannon is the real champion here. So I'd love to see something like that happen locally, where you know we can just bring a real competitor out and see what the champion do. Well, I, I totally agree with you. Uh, I, I'll, I'll be on the sidelines watching, just like you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I have some people that, you know, during my own MMA career, it, it's no secret. My the strength that I brought to my uh, career was my grappling ability. Getting Using my hands with fisticuffs was not exactly my strength. <laughs> I probably still could hold the hands, probably the same way that John L. Sullivan would have been holding his hands up in that, that, that uh, old-fashioned type of stance right there because it wasn't in my brother's <laughs> stance. But uh, no, to, to be able to witness something like that, that is from the past, it's, it's nostalgic. And to, you know, I've read different articles about John L. Sullivan. And, and to have uh, listened to a few different people who were told that, that, uh, that hold this belt that's uh, in excess of 100, top and right, 100 plus years. Yeah, this belt. Is, yes. To be, I, I just like to, to see this belt and then to see it get passed on to the new era. I have another question for you, Dan. Uh, are you going to continue with your involvement with Real BKF and Shannon Rich in the future? Oh, of course. So, like I said, this, you know, kind of like what I, I just said previously, this is just a stumbling block. This event should have took place, but didn't. Just chop it up to uh, the cost of education, and we shall move ahead. Uh, hopefully, we will just have uh, a little bit better class of, uh, of individual that we'll be working with, where the word actually might mean something. Or we simply just have to start using double and triple pin type of contract, so that uh, even if the word doesn't mean anything, well, we move on irregardless. A question for uh, Hungry Ranger. Uh, Joe Mack mentioned that you were very instrumental in negotiating with the Native American tribes. What is the status of securing one of their casinos now that this event has been canceled? Well, we have had uh, multiple conversations uh, with many different tribes, including to uh, former uh, uh, casino uh, executives that were involved in the, I believe it was 2011. Is that the year now? That now. Um, we've talked with many different tribes uh, across the United States. And uh, they're very interested in working with Dan Severn, Don Pry, and a Native American, uh, Shannon Rich from the Choctaw Nation. Um, he's one of the first Native American and probably the only Native American world champion of his caliber. Um, and uh, they're looking forward to show that the Native American uh, champions are, are teamed up with Dan and Don, and, and uh, they're going to bring the fans. Uh, a bare knuckle boxing event like they did at Fort McDowell. It is going. It is going to happen, and uh, hopefully with the efforts of BKF, uh, Scott Burke, Police Gazette, 
and all the fans, not only here in the United States, but in the UK and everywhere else. Um, an event will take place. Uh, stay tuned. So, um, so Sh Mr. Rich, Shan, are you are you really uh, Native American? Yeah, I'm actually a quarter Choctaw. My uh, my dad's half. My grandmother's full blooded Choctaw Indian. Uh, Dan, I got another question for you. Big, big fan, sir. Um, can you just tell us a little bit more about your plans with KB American MMA as you move forward? Well, right now, I don't know what, well, much more I can really elaborate on to it. Uh, like I said, we're here right now just to kind of put uh, all rumors uh, to, to rest here as to why this event did not take place. And uh, well, some of the same gentlemen that are here will probably uh, we'll do our little huddle together. And, and uh, I should say, not, not at just at this one point. We've already had conversations last night, some meetings last night with uh, other uh, gentlemen that are involved with various casinos. We're looking at taking this, uh, whether this could take place at, at different various casino locations, or whether that uh, this will take place in a very interesting studio where we can do a lot of different things, where it'll be a limited number of folks that will actually be able to watch this, but they will be treated to uh, a 3D three, three, three uh, event that has never taken place. Uh, like I said, it, it's kind of the technology that, that we are doing, and that literally we can place ourselves wherever we want to be, and, and especially the way that technology has advanced, and the ability of doing live streaming pay-per-views anywhere that, that you want to do things. A lot of opportunities. It just it, It's great to be involved with vast number of people that we are involved with and all of the, uh, the, the, the knowledge and expertise that each one brings to the table. It's, it's a great team that has been put together and all I see is nothing but success. So nothing but an upside. And let's just, glad you said that. Thank you for that, Dan. Because uh, Bobby Gunn said this was a fake press conference. Is this a fake press conference, ladies and gentlemen? No, no. I don't think this is a fake press conference. That man's not fake. This man's not fake. That man's not fake. I'm certainly not fake. And. You know, I want to hit on something, and we're going to close with this. All due respect to Mr. Scott Burke from Bare Knuckle Boxing Hall of Fame. I was manipulated into speaking to that man in a manner which I should not have. Shannon Rich heard Bobby Gunn bragging about it on a conference call with he and I, that Shannon, that, that Bobby Gunn was listening. Bobby Gunn manipulated me into calling. Shan, uh, Scott Burt and, and said, put him in his place, read him the riot act, go psycho Joe on him. So I did. I shouldn't have. And I've apologized to Mr. Mr. Scott Burt uh, via direct message on Twitter. Um, I uh, sent an email to, very detailed email to Mr. Uh, Westlake of the uh, Police Gazette. We mean absolutely zero disrespect to anyone. I let my emotions get the better of me. And I let my relationship that I thought I had, that I thought was a friendship with Bobby Gunn, that I thought was true and honest, it was nothing but a sham. So now I feel like I'm relieved, like I have this 225 pound problem taken off my back. So what we want to wrap up with, because we do respect the Bare Knuckle Boxing Hall of Fame, but we want to be very clear on something. In 2011, when Dave Feldman put on the Bare Knuckle Boxing Linear Heavyweight Championship, my question is twofold. Number one, how in the world was Richard Stewart, a fighter who had an unremarkable cruiserweight career, had a record of 14 wins, nine losses, three draws. He had lost his last professional fights, I believe, five in a row, four in a row, whatever it was. He was a not a stellar candidate. How was he made to be the number one the number one contender. And how was it that Bobby Gunn gets to be the self-proclaimed heavyweight champion of the world? Shouldn't there have been some type of tournament to proclaim who was going to be the finalist to fight? This just doesn't make any sense. So really the claims of Bobby Gunn being the heavyweight champion of the world, they are based off of a fight that was 90 second rounds with a one minute rest in between against an unqualified um, contender in no disrespect to Richard Stewart, but he wasn't qualified to be in there. Bobby Gunn's barely qualified to be in there. And I want to give some advice to Mr. Feldman. Your arena that you made, it's not called a, it's not called a hexagon, as you kept calling it. It's called a hexagon. 
Hexagon is a symmetrical six-sided geometric shape. Hexagon, H-E-X-G-O-N. Hexagon, not a hexagon, as you repeatedly call it. So I thought I'd straighten that out for you. So since Bobby Gunn got to make up, and his, his promoter got to make up, and say, we're fighting for the lineal championship because Mr. Scott Burr was not involved with this at this time. He did not get involved with Bobby Gunn until Bobby Gunn lobbied him, and he was in, uh, awarded the belt in 2014, three years after the one fight that he had that was allegedly for this lineal championship. We have just as much right to put on a fight and declare it for the lineal championship as anybody else does, and we've got a more qualified fighter who's willing to face more qualified fighters. And moving forward, we want to work with Scott Burke. We want to work with the Police Gazette. We want to bring the dignity, the honesty, and the history of bare knuckle fighting back to the masses because let's face it, folks, people might say it's brutal, but if you were walking through a Walmart parking lot and two guys started throwing down fighting, I guarantee you even Granny and the Walker would stop and watch. It's just primal. It's just the way we're made. So we want to thank everyone for coming out. This is a truth campaign, not a smear campaign, campaign like the gun camp is trying to do. We're speaking nothing but the truth, documentation, all credible, reputable people. And you have not heard the last from Shannon Rich. You have not heard the last from Real BKF and Joe Mack. And you certainly have not heard the last from Tommy Ranger and Mr. Dan Severin. And moving forward, we will be bringing to the masses an amazing and spectacular combat sport to rival the UFC. But listen, you don't bring a gun to a cannon fight. This concludes our press conference. Thank you.